Now that is a pretty decent sized hole in the ground. And have a look at that tree. It like is actually growing out, so out of the edge of the rock face. And you can even from here you can see the, the cut marks and the tools. Today I'm in the heart of North Cheshire and I'm halfway up a rather steep hill next to the town of Helsby. Welcome to another explore. See if I can see any further into the quarry. I think that's probably as far as we're going to get. It probably is a bit dangerous, but it's an interesting feature. Look on the, the rock there. There's a there's a bit cut out of it. It looks as though something slid into there. Any ideas what that could have been? There's nothing on the opposite side because there's no rock. Once again you can see the cut marks. Um, I don't know if they've been made by hand tools or not, they could be. I think this was cut in the early 19th century so I think it would have been anything else to use other than hand tools. Let's just climb these stairs and you look at this, if you look at the rock face here, obviously, once again you've got your tool marks. But what is that? That's square. Is that a bit of scaffolding? See how deep that goes. I can't see, I'm holding. I don't know if you can see that properly. And then up there, look at that. You've got a vein of rock. The geology here is brilliant. And as we move up, we've got this huge recess. That's not to surely dug out. I mean, it is dug out. You can see the tool marks there. So that's there for a reason. Candle, it's a very large candle. Any ideas? There's another one there. That's dug out. More tool marks. We've got our vein going through here. And here we've got another very large recess cut out of the rock. I've no idea what that could be used for. But it's definitely cut out. You can see the tool marks is cut out for a purpose. Now we've got tree roots coming out of the seams. Let's move on. So before we explore any further, let's have a look at the National Library of Scotland maps to see just where we are. So top left of the screen, uh, that will be the southern end of the Wirral Peninsula. The large body of water at the top, that's the River Mersey. And looking at the M56 sign, pretty much centre of the page, Hellsby can be found directly beneath that. To the southwest, you can just see Chester there, and then slightly north of Hellsby, 
uh, as the River Mersey narrows, you can see Runcorn. So just to get an idea of exactly where we are in the country. Now, rather than the obvious huge hole dug from the landscape, rather synonymous with classic Doctor Who, Mount Skill or Hellsby Quarry, as I stated at the beginning, has been carved from the southern edge of Hellsby Hill, um, an impressive sandstone outcrop rising 462 feet above the Cheshire Plains and overlooking the pleasant town of Hellsby. Now, moving on to this overhead view, our quarry can be found here. And if we take our map back to 1891, we get a much, much clearer idea of the size of the quarry and where it is. So what are we looking at? Well, I entered the quarry. This here is Sandy Lane. I entered it here. This is where we found the big hole. Um, and I'm currently walking up this route here at the moment. Uh, we've got a tramway here that was used to transport the stone away from the quarry. I'll talk about that in a bit <clears throat> and we'll follow the route as it goes into Helsby. Helsby the town, obviously a lot smaller than it is today, but that's all this bit here. Um, so let's carry on with the exploring. We've got some, some more old workings there, look. See the wall behind the vegetation. Quarrying began here in the early 19th century, and the sandstone removed can be found in many of the buildings in the area. A considerable amount was carried on horse-drawn wagons to Ince Pier on the southern banks of the Mersey and transported to Birkenhead and Liverpool. The neoclassical custom house building, which once stood in Canning Dock in Liverpool, was one such example. By the 1920s, quarrying at Mount Skill ceased, and the area quickly fell into disrepair and was subsequently used as a rubbish dump. Thankfully, the site was acquired in the late 1980s by the Borough Council, whereby all of the rubbish was removed and turned into the nature reserve, which you can see today. Along with the couple of centuries of history since the quarry was set up here, Helsby's geology takes us back a mere 250 million years. In those days, the Cheshire Plain was almost equatorial and riddled with river channels which deposited the sand over the many millennia which went on to make up the sandstone bedrock which can be seen today. Known as the Helsby Sandstone Formation, this wall with its caves clearly shows the different layers which have built up over those millions of years and since quarrying even the odd dinosaur footprint has turned up. This still shows the various layers visible in the rock face and I've attempted to identify as to what each one represents. The bottom layer shows sandstone which was formed at least 250 million years ago. And here you can see a closer view of those lower layers in one of the caves.
now that the sandstone has been quarried and the fossils picked out, although to be fair, in the early 19th century, they wouldn't have recognised them as fossils, the stone has to be transported away. Initially, this was done by a poor old horse and cart. However, this was soon replaced with the construction of a tramway, although it still required a poor old horse to drag wagons behind it. The tramway proceeded away from the quarry, down the hill and into Helsby, and then out over the marshes to Ince Pier, where it was then loaded upon barges and transported along the River Mersey towards Liverpool. So in this 1894 map, you can see Helsby Quarry um, down in the bottom right-hand corner almost of the map. Now, almost central in the quarry, you can also see the tramway, the straight line. Now, if you follow that, it takes a bit of a dog leg through the tunnel, and then it heads out of the quarry, down the hill, and into Helsby itself. And then you can see it making its way out towards the main uh, Chester-Manchester railway line. There is a bit of a, a strange one. All the records state, um, and I'm obviously not disputing this, that the stone was taken out across the marshes, which is on the other side of the railway line, um, and out to Ince Pier. But if you look at the map, the tramway clearly deviates to run parallel with the railway line towards Helsby Station. Um, now, this map is a good 26 years before closure. So, was this stone, instead of being transported to Ince Pier, was it by this time taken to the railway and taken to Liverpool? So, if you thought I was standing in the middle of a marsh, you'd be half right. Where I am actually standing, approximately is the area where the tramway would have started and obviously before that the roadway where the horse-drawn wagons would have taken slate down the hill down Helsby Hill all the way to Ince Pier but approximately this area here and I don't even know if it's the same ground level whether it's been filled in I've done quite a bit of map work and I'm still not a hundred percent sure I'm probably about 85 to 90 percent sure this area here is approximately where the tramway and before that the roadway to take the slate out of the quarry started now forget the little pathway we got there bit of a false herring the map of 1894 i think it is shows the tramway going approximately in that direction so obviously we can't go through the trees but let's follow roughly and see where we can get to on the other side of those trees, the marshy area, you might be able to just see it through those trees there. Now, you've got to bear in mind this whole area has been completely re-landscaped for the nature uh, reserve that it is. But our tramway, I'm being very approximate here because I can't work out exactly, but it went more or less in that direction there. Um, we've got this strange concrete feature here i've absolutely no idea what that could be they actually look like it could be breeze blocks which certainly rules out anything too old um could they be from the 1920s when the quarry closed i don't know anyway <clears throat> We'll take this trial here. This is a footpath that comes from the car park up there. And we're coming to another rock face. And this is where the guesswork ends now, because I know exactly once we get to this rock face here, we are definitely on the route of the tramway. But I think, oh well, I'm pretty certain all this is infill. Um, and our tramway would have come from that direction there through here this is all infill if you look at the maps it runs pretty much along the face of this this rock rock face here
as we continue to follow the route of the tramway, we come to the tunnel. Probably the best man-made feature on the whole site. But before we go in, there's a very curious thing I just want to want to show you. Let's see if I can find it. It's, uh, there you go. A triangular hole. Clearly it's not drilled. Um, surely if you smashed something through that, a metal a triangular metal pole, it would splinter the stuff. I don't know, what's that for? And how did they do it? Remember the layers from the rock wall earlier? Well, the geology here inside the tunnel is the same. When they dug here to accommodate the tramway, they were essentially cutting a route through a 250 million year old fossilised sand dune. Although in here, it's been protected from the weather these past 200 years, and you can see the wonderful red and oranges in the sandstone. So as we make our way out of the tunnel um, and the quarry, let's have a quick look at the northern entrance. It's still the same jolly, see the layers there. And I always love the way the, the trees grow out of the gaps in these rocks. It, sh it should make it unstable, but it doesn't. Look, there's a, there's a root there curling out of the gap. Absolutely lovely. You can see the layers there, blues reds and oranges. So with Hellsby Quarry behind us we'll now make our way down the hill and into the town and show you the route that the tramway took. Well, the first thing you may notice as we descend is that the roadway before us isn't tarmac or even loose gravel, but sandstone. So we are walking essentially on the bedrock. Remember all of that dating back to the Triassic period some 250 million years ago. So let's pause here a moment. So this is definitely a long shot and pure guesswork, but are those sandstone blocks neatly placed in a line? And there's also a few more on the other side, not so aligned. Could they possibly be stone sleepers from our tramway? Or am I, is that just wishful thinking? There's definitely plenty of blocks scattered around. They, they may be, um, the, the old sleepers and just dislodged over time they may not be but I don't suppose we'll ever know I'm now down the first part of the hill and I'm coming into Hellsby we have a road in front of us passing from left to right which is Robin Hood Lane and this means the ground levels out for a short distance. Our tramway would have crossed over the road and passed between the walls opposite precisely where the car is parked. It would have then taken a sharp right passing behind the house on the right. Now talking of the house on the right, have a look and see how thin it is. Now I've put forward the suggestion um, this is obviously possibly that the reason for that it's so thin is that it was built whilst the tramway was still in operation and it wasn't able to encroach upon the road so you know with the road in front and the tramway behind it had to be built that thin. I've continued along Robin Hood Lane and I'm now round the corner on the opposite side of the thin house. You can just make it out there with the arrow So let's have a quick look on our map to see where we are. Now, we started off here in Hellsby, uh, in Hellsby Quarry, I should say. And we came down here, there's the tunnel. We came through the tunnel, down the hill, 
Now here's Robin Hood Lane. We've just crossed over Robin Hood Lane. Here is the thin house. And I walked down there and I'm around here at the moment. And you can see our tramway goes behind the thin house and then merges with Robin Hood Lane just on the left hand side. So not quite on the road, but on the left hand side of it. And now we're going to make our way towards um, the railway line. So after coming round the back of the thin house um, and snaking its way towards us, I'd say that our tramway would probably emerge around the corner of that uh, fence in towards the bottom right hand of the picture. It would then stick to that side of the road, not quite on the road, but well, crossing over that drive, through that bush on the left, through that house and through those trees. So not quite on the road, but just to the left of it where a, a footpath would normally be situated. Now we're coming to the main road now in Helsby. A small point of interest about this road was when the then owner of the quarry, a John Southern, was only able to build his tramway after he was given permission for it to cross this road. Um, obviously the speed and density of traffic in the early 19th century was vastly different to today, but had he not been given permission, his tramway wouldn't have been built. I think sometimes in the modern day environment it can be difficult to place long disappeared infrastructure onto our landscape, bearing in mind what we look at today is vastly different to the mid 1800s. For example here, where the road is flanked by houses, back then would have been trees and for all intents and purposes a rural scene. Oh wow, a squirrel! So we're now coming to the end of our tramway walk as depicted upon the 1894 map. Uh, again, it, our tramway would have run just to the left of the path that I'm walking upon. And in distance terms, it's probably only around half a mile since we left Helsby Quarry. Which isn't much unless you're the poor horse doing all the heavy work. But the gradient is relatively steep. Now our, our tramway would have now crossed over the road. Now don't forget this road was here uh, in the early mid 1800s. And now our tramway would have gone into those or through that area where those houses are now. And then it would have run parallel, uh, joining up, not physically, but running parallel with the main Chester to Manchester railway line, where I'm assuming that the stone was laid, uh, loaded onto trains. As a last thought, I decided it would be interesting to see just where Ince Pier was. So taking a look at the 1894 map of the village of Ince, I'll zoom in to the banks of the Mersey.